What did you think about Star Wars The Last Jedi as you left the theater? Never has a high-grossing, big-budget blockbuster been so divisive amongst its audience. To some, it was a much-needed shot in the arm to a stale franchise. To others, it was a cause to boycott any following films. All these opinions and more have been discussed non-stop since the film's release, but none of these things are what had me bothered when I left the theater. Look at these two scenes. How would you describe the Ewok world based on just the visuals alone? They aren't industrialized, their hoods look relevant to age and status. What about the village on Octo? They're nuns, just British nuns, that's all. Okay, what can you tell me looking at the very first Death Star raid? These two militaries have very different technology. The big evil empire ships and weapons look slick and new, while the scrappy rebels tech look dirty and old and almost thrown together. There's some familiarity with the way everything works, but it still looks like a space battle from a galaxy far, far away. What about the dreadnought attack? They're bombers. Air Force bombers dropping bombs. Something completely recognizable. What this all comes down to is each film's production design. The creation and organization of all things in a film's physical world. Production designers work tirelessly to create every single thing you see on screen, like props, sets, models, and text. Even objects done with CGI have to be designed by these artists. In every other Star Wars film, including the prequels, you can see inventive ways the universe is expressed. All this is important because production design helps tell the story. The problem with The Last Jedi's production design is that it doesn't tell a story. Instead, it tells us what writer-director Ryan Johnson thinks is cool. It unapologetically looks like the early 20th century. This intentionally referential style doesn't exist to help make a richer environment. It exists only to grab our attention. When asked what movies inspired The Last Jedi, Johnson named several classic samurai and war films. What's ironic is that these are all the exact same types of films that inspired George Lucas while making A New Hope, but Lucas borrowed filmmaking and storytelling techniques from his predecessors. You wouldn't say this fight is a Buddhist monk and a samurai having a kendo duel, which is exactly what it is, but it only takes the Japanese influence as a guide as opposed to the literal samurai that make up Snoke's arts. This is funny coming from the film whose big message is, Let the past die. Kill it, if you have to. It's time to let old things die. You're still holding on! Let go! Although many talented people worked on this film, I'm going to say Ryan Johnson is mostly responsible for what I didn't like. According to the film's own production designer, Rick Heinrichs, the movie is, by and large, the same movie he pitched to me three years ago, which is so unusual. There's certainly a combination of the different creative people involved, but it's very much Ryan and really his initial pitch, which, like I said, hardly wavered at all. I know there's some wiggle room. Even if something is theoretically invented in a vacuum, there's a limited amount of ways form can express function. Designers must borrow from the real world to create something new. Philosopher Bruno Latour put it best when he said, all design is redesign. But this wiggle room is not The Last Jedi's problem. Johnson used his creative control to make a film his pop culture driven imagination wanted to see. Even in the prequels where Lucas also had 100% creative control, he let designers do their jobs to make cultures and technologies that were not only unique, but made sense of the movie's universe. In many ways, even though you only see such a small glimpse of it in the film, all this rich history was all figured out and planned. So there's this incredible sense of history for the planet, and that's what really grounds the look of all of these films to make it look very believable. The worst offenders are the ski speeders on Crate that have pointless rudders stuck in the ground, a design which made no sense beyond referencing old Air Force movies and to get this cool shot. When asked about this scene, Rick Heinrich said, Now, when I say specific idea, Ryan knew what he was going for in terms of feel. The actual shapes and the actual thought behind how it operates was just a little bit less clear. We were exploring more blade-like, skate-like ideas. Brian said, no, I want it elevated. To reiterate, Johnson let his plot center around the invented fuel problem just to force the resistance onto a planet, just to flip-flop his stance on impractical heroism, which he later flip-flopped on again, just to have his characters go out for one last stand, just so the speeders that the production designer himself didn't like could kick up the multicolored terrain, just to reference old war movies. 
Again, no storytelling, no logic, just a cool reference. Let the past die. Even when something looked like it was from Star Wars, his story would be so referential it wouldn't make sense for the design. Like the slow speed chase that took up a big chunk of the movie. This level of tension is clearly appropriate for a movie about boats on an open ocean, not huge interstellar ships in the three dimensions of space. To make a sci-fi version of this classic cat and mouse plot, Johnson didn't use the genre to tell a new inventive story. Instead, he turned the plot into very slowly getting away. Ryan Johnson is no stranger to stylistic juxtaposition. His debut film, Brick, is essentially a remake of the Maltese Falcon set in high school, and it's an absolutely incredible film. The story and the style work with each other instead of against each other. A clash of styles has worked many times. A plague on both your houses! Voulant toute la nuit dans l'espace intersidéral, nous serons demain dans notre pays. But the production design of Star Wars has never been about clashing styles. It's supposed to add depth to a fictional world. When I left the theater, I thought, that didn't feel like Star Wars. Even at its worst, Star Wars has always been about the creativity of its universe. Star Wars isn't a cheeky, self-aware movie that references stuff the creator grew up liking. Let the past die. It's its own place. That's how the franchise has grown beyond just a few movies into books, toys, spin-offs, video games, conventions, comics, cosplay, TV shows, and even theme parks. This strange world is so detailed, it feels real enough to exist. And The Last Jedi added to none of it because Ryan Johnson's imagination couldn't come up with anything beyond what he's seen.